Today I'm going to show you four different ways to get really accurate map borders when using GeoLayers 3 inside of Adobe After Effects. First up is simplification. I'm going to go over to the search right here and I'm going to search for Cambodia. I'm going to grab this first map feature here and as I hover over it, if you look down in the preview, you can see that this looks like a pretty detailed map feature. So I'm going to add this to my browser here and then I'm going to double click on it. That's going to zoom our map comp here. Now I'm going to hold control and click on finalize so we get some high resolution imagery here. If I full screen this, you can see that we actually in this particular map profile, we can see the map borders right here already in the imagery. So as we draw features, we're going to be able to see how these line up. Also, this is showing us the maritime borders which extend out into the ocean here. Before we draw this out, we have to select a layer style. Go up here to see your layer styles. I've already created this style, which I called Nasty Red, and that's simply so we can see it contrasted well against our base map here. So the simplification is right down here. It's this checkbox in the layer styles dialog box, and it has three different modes. You have deselected, which is no simplification, and then you have current zoom and max zoom. And this essentially tells After Effects how many vertices to draw on the shape layer as it draws it out. The more vertices that you draw will give you a more detailed shape. However, it will give you less performance on your machine, giving you longer render times and a more bogged down, slow, laggy experience. So let's take a look at the difference here. I'm going to deselect Simplify Geometry. And with my map feature, I'm going to go ahead and draw this out. So this is looking pretty good. If I select this layer now and I hit the G key, you can see all these vertices, which are the little blue dots. If I zoom in here, you can really start to see how many vertices are here. Let's go ahead and rename this layer. I'll call it No Simplification. And now I'm gonna lock it and just turn the visibility off. We'll go back to GeoLayers 3 and let's go and switch this back to Current Zoom. Now the cool thing about Current Zoom is that this helps you keep those shapes a good resolution regarding on your scale or zoom level. So if I were to zoom this all the way out, let's say I'm gonna draw like 100 countries all at the same time, we naturally don't wanna use a ton of vertices on all of these shape features. So that's why you would want to use current zoom to help you simplify some of that geometry. Now if I draw this out, it's again at current zoom, we're gonna draw this out, it's going to give us this feature. It looks good from here, but if we go back and zoom in, you can now start to see how low resolution this is. And if I click on it here and I hit G again to see the vertices, look how low resolution this is. Last but not least, for simplification, you have max zoom. And what this does, it will read if you have keyframes here, and it will take the most zoomed in level and apply the geometry for that zoom level. Very, very cool. All right, so that is simplification. Now we wanna talk about sources. So right here, I reactivated the, the visibility of the most detailed shape layer here. And if I zoom in, you can still see that this is not looking accurate here. So this is our map profile here. The map feature is not lining up very nicely with it. And a big shout out to Emily over on Twitter who actually was animating some maps in Cambodia and brought this to my attention. And I also had another viewer talking about Palestine had the same issue. So this has to do with where you're getting the map features from. So if you remember over here in the search bar, when I typed in Cambodia, I just grabbed this first map feature here. And if you look up here, it says natural earth. So this is the data set. This is where it's pulling this map data from. Down here, you have one called Naminatum. I think that's how you pronounce it. This is essentially open street map. So if you come down here, there's another one called Cambodia Administrative. So if you open this one up, unfortunately we don't get a map preview here, but I'm gonna add this to the browser. And I'm gonna quickly hit Feature Properties, and I'm gonna call this OpenStreetMap, just so we know that this is OpenStreetMap. And if you take a look at this, this one actually is giving us the maritime borders as well. So right here, we have Natural Earth, here OpenStreetMap. So I'll go ahead and rename this one as well, so we know it's from Natural Earth. So for whatever reason, the OSM OpenStreetMap data is more accurate, more detailed than the natural earth data. I'm not specifically sure why, but that's just the way it is. So if we go and we draw this out, now I'll turn off the visibility of this natural earth one. And if we zoom in, now we have really accurate borders along the land here. You can see that it's going along pretty well. 
with these other borders on our map profile. So it's looking much, much better. The only problem now is if we zoom out, we can see we have the maritime border. So it looks really great on land here, but when it comes to the coastline, it looks terrible. We don't want this to look, you know, we want it to hug the coastline. This is another problem that introduces our next solution. What I like to do is I like to grab the water features here. So what I'm gonna do is subtract a water feature from our Cambodia feature, and this is all gonna take place within here. So first, I'm gonna add features to browser, download features, and I'm gonna go search for physical areas water. This is another natural earth data set. If you open this up, this gives you all the water bodies in the entire world. So just filter the view right here with this feature collection selected, and it's gonna show you what we have here. And what we're gonna focus on is the Gulf of Thailand. Now, the only problem with this is when you zoom in, you can see we got this from natural earth. So naturally, it's gonna be a little sloppy which you can see if we draw it out, this isn't gonna hug the coastline very nicely. So you can see it's the Gulf of Thailand. So if I go back and I search Gulf of Thailand, let's just see if I have it. I do have it inside of OpenStreetMap. Once again, it's Naminatum, so go ahead and add that to browser. And now you can see this map feature is much more detailed. All you have to do now is grab this, and what we're gonna do is grab these two features together. So I'm gonna grab Cambodia here, and if you hold shift and grab the Gulf of Thailand, you see the, that these oversect here. You can now see this new button active right here. It says subtract lower feature. So make sure that the Gulf of Thailand, your open street map data set here, is below your Cambodia. So right here, we're gonna grab this. It has to be below it, otherwise you're gonna subtract Cambodia. So now if we subtract, we have a new feature that's called Cambodia OSM subtracted. You can name it whatever you want. You can say Cambodia Good Borders. Apply. Now, if we go ahead and draw this out at a max zoom, we now have a very, very nice Cambodia here. If we go, we've got the proper land borders. We've got the proper water borders. I know it's a lot, but hey, if you want the quality, you got to put in the time. And you know, if you don't want to put in the time, you can always put in the money. So if you want to join the Map Tyler Premium data plan, you get access to what's called a water mass comp. So I'm going to turn this off. And what this allows you to do is essentially create another comp that's going to mask out all of your water. So then you can separate everything and you have really nice clean borders. And you do that right up here. It says create water mask map comp. Now, again, if you don't have the Map Tyler premium data subscription plan, you're not going to see a few of these buttons, including water mask. So if you click on that, it's going to take a little while. And what it does, it creates a new map comp here, which is essentially a black and white map comp of uh, water and land. And then it's going to automatically apply a set mat effect to your main comp. If I go to effect controls, you can now see it added water mask. And this is a set mat effect. So if I hit transparency here, you can now see we're just looking at the land. Everything that's black is transparent. So if I toggle this effect off, you can see what it's doing. And now what's cool about this is you can also apply, you can just copy and paste this set mat effect to your features. For example, I could come down here to the OSM feature. Let's just go ahead and draw this one out again. Again, we have the good land border quality here, but we don't have the good coastal border. So I'm gonna come down to world map comp and I'm going to copy that water mask effect, which is, again, just a set mat effect. And I'm going to paste it directly on my map feature. And then if I turn it on, you can see now we not only have the good coastal borders, but we have all of our other water features here that are showing through on this map feature now because it's just pulling that information from our water mask map comp, which, by the way, you have to finalize. Otherwise, it might, be, it might look really pixelated for you. If it does, simply finalize. So there you have it, four different ways to get really nice, accurate borders. If you want to learn more about map animations, be sure to check out my Patreon page. If you want to become a master of GeoLayers 3, check out my GeoLayers 3 Masterclass. All those links are available in the video description. Big shout out to my Tier 3 patrons, Tyson the Keymaster, Mike and Sandra over on YouTube at Flumi Plus One, Ryan, Josh, and Alex. Thank you all so much for making this video possible.